Richmond. I am learning every day about the ag industry and how we can help our farmers, ranchers. 40 percent putting strain on an already stressed Medicare system. He yields back. Now, please recognize the gentleman from Missouri, Mr. Alford, for five minutes of questioning. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, for being here. I think you'll be glad to know that since we last met here a year ago, I've boned up on pesticides. I am a freshman. I am learning every day about the ag industry and how we can help our farmers, ranchers, producers uh, in Missouri. I've been learning a lot lately about SNAP. Um, and I want to be clear that I, I truly believe, Mr. Secretary, we live in the greatest nation known to man. If someone is truly hungry, can't work, we should help them on a temporary basis. And I know Representative Moore has uh, touched on the SNAP overpayments, but I want to clarify just a few things with you today, Mr. Secretary. Each day in America, there are $30 million in overpayments in SNAP, $11 billion a year. Do you consider trying to eliminate overpayments, waste, abuse, and fraud as making cuts to the SNAP program or taking food away from those who rightly qualify for the program? No. Thank you for that answer. Supplemental Nutritional Assistance Program is supposed to be a temporary help for those who are truly in need, and of course we know the N stands for nutrition. Yet the second most common SNAP purchase is sweetened drinks, $680 million, I believe, in 2022. Today, the obesity rate in America is nearly 40 percent, putting strain on an already stressed Medicare system. So, Mr. Secretary, how do I go home to the 4th Congressional District of Missouri and explain to my constituents and taxpayers there why we are doing this? Why are we funding to worsen the obesity crisis in America? Well, uh, Congressman, I think uh, you have to kind of uh, dive deep into uh, the utilization of those products. Uh, what you're going to find, I think, in many cases is that that is a substitute for caffeine, uh, a less expensive substitute for caffeine, for coffee and tea being more expensive. Uh, and many families basically use it for that purpose. Uh, what we try to do uh, in the SNAP program is provide education. Uh, we try to provide strategies for stretching that food dollar in a way that focuses on proper nutrition without stigmatizing those who are on SNAP. Well, Mr. Secretary, I in no way want to stigmatize anyone, but clearly the educational portion of this is not working. Our obesity rate is climbing through the roof. We are at, at uh, a financial uh, uh, crossroads now uh, in, with Medicare and Social Security, but this obesity issue uh, I think can be directly related uh, in part uh, to poor nutrition in America, and, and part of that because of the Supplemental Nutritional Assistance Program. Well, the challenge, I think, is, to, is to, I don't believe you're suggesting this, I hope you're not, that it's only poor people that are obese or it's only poor No, people. sir, I am not. Okay. No, sir. Well, then the question then becomes what can we do as a country, not necessarily stigmatizing or setting aside one, one group of people, but recognizing the obesity issue is something that's, that, that's across, across the income levels, across I, race across the entire country. I do appreciate that. And that's, that's that, that is a great answer. We've got to focus in on that. But taxpayers should not be paying to make America more well, obese, in tax, my opinion. Taxpayer. Recently, Democrat Representative Jonathan Jackson and Don Davis and I filed uh, the Fair Label Act to ensure consumers are fully informed and know the difference between meat from an animal and protein grown in the lab or a, a Petri dish. What is the USA doing to inform and protect consumers when it comes to uh, making them aware of what the, the truth is behind these sources of protein. We're, we're working on labeling to make sure that they properly represent uh, the product, uh, the characteristics of the product. We're working on labeling, just as we are working on the product of the U.S. How soon will that come out, sir? Um, I don't want to give you a specific timeline because I'm not confident as I sit here that I know, but I will certainly get that to you. It's, it, it, we are working on it. Okay, thank We are you. working, I, I will tell you though, that our priority is product of the USA. Label, get that through the process because we do recognize people are taking advantage of that label uh, and consumers' expectations are not being met. There's misrepresentation there. We want to make sure that when you go to the grocery store, you see something product of the U.S., you know that everything was done. Good. Let's work together on that, sir. Finally, should citizens of adversarial nations, including Russia, China, Iran, Cuba, be allowed to purchase any land, including farmland, in the United States of America? You know, that's a tough question. And I'll tell you why. you got tough. 20 seconds to answer it. Well, you know, I'll tell you what. Let me, let me put it this way. 
Uh, it's a tough question. Uh, I think it's a, I think the, the, the amount of land that's being purchased by those folks is minimal. It's, I think people have this feeling that it's a lot of the land. It's not. I say Plus, one outhouse is too many for a well, member it, of an adversarial be, nation to buy in our precious here, sovereign Here's land. the problem, sir. Here's the problem. You also want to sell product to those people, some of those people. So when I'm talking to the Chinese ag minister, the first, one of the first things he brings up is this whole notion of <coughs> Syngenta, Arkansas, and so forth. He, they're our number one customer. Can you go to Russia and buy land? Yeah, forget Russia. I'm talking about China. Can you go to I'm, China? You I'm can with a sponsor, but they have to have 51 no, you can't. sponsorship. And, 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 I, and that's how I responded. But the reality is that we're- I've gone over my time. I do thank you for being that's here. That's our number thank one you. customer. We have to be sensitive to that. Thank you. Uh, a less expensive substitute for caffeine, for coffee and tea being more expensive. Uh, it's, uh, touched on the SNAP overpayments, but I want to clarify just a few things with you, constituents and taxpayers there. Why we are doing this? Why are we funding? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, for being here. I think you'll be glad to producers uh, in Missouri. I've been learning a lot lately about SNAP. Fraud as making cuts to the SNAP program or taking food away from those who... Yields back. Now, please recognize the gentleman from Missouri. Mr. Alford, for five minutes of question. In 2022, today the obesity rate in America is nearly four. Lightly qualify for the program? No. Thank you for that answer. Supplemental Nutritional Assistance Program is supposed to be a temporary help for those who are truly in. And I am learning every day about the ag industry and how we can help our farmers, ranchers. Well, uh, Congressman, I think uh, you have to kind of. Uh, dive deep into to know that since we last met here a year ago I've boned up on pesticides I am a fresh so mr. secretary how do I go home to the fourth congressional district of Missouri and explain to my cons program is provide education uh, we try to provide strategies for stretching that food work we should help them on a temporary basis and I know representative Moore has